Welcome to another episode of Open Transport Tycoon Deluxe. This is the fourth episode. Today, we're gonna expand the network again, like every day. And we're gonna upgrade some junctions. But first, we're gonna turn our attention to the goods area. I'll be doubling the amount of platforms for the goods pickup station, doing a small bit of rerouting, and uh, getting us ready for a future expansion. And now I'm going to go around and add more trains to the stations servicing our primary industries. And since we've been servicing them well, the resources they produce have been slowly growing over time. So it's always kind of a good idea to look around the map to all your primary stations and add more trains over time. I haven't really talked about it yet, but I am using a set of mods for this playthrough. There are mostly visual mods, except for the per universal rainbow rails and the logic engine. Now I probably won't end up using these mods in this playthrough, but there's something that's just kind of nice to have just in case. And now if you're new to modding and don't know where to start, I would recommend uh, starting with Industrial Stations Renewal. It adds a whole bunch of new station tiles that are responsive to the cargo that's held in the station. I think it has coverage for every resource in the game, I'm not entirely sure, but it's a really easy way to kind of get into making your stations look a little nicer. Kind of give some eye candy. Plus, like I said, they're responsive to cargo waiting in a station, so it kind of gives some life to the world. Anyways, that's enough mod talk. Now I'm panning around the map and I see a cluster of farms up on that hill. I think it's a good spot to build another sideline and hook it up into our main line there. And there we have it, a junction that kind of goes up a hill. That was a real pain to make, but uh, it's all done. Here we go, SLH, sideline hub, 03. Now we can go ahead and hook up these farms to the sideline. Now at this point, we're adding quite a few farm trains. And uh, you know, for every farm we get quite a few trains and for each of those we get another goods train as a result. So we're gonna have to really up the throughput for our little factory area in the south side of the map. 
So I guess I'll start by adding another lane to this bridge and then we'll kind of work back towards the factory from there. Now that we've got the second line placed, we can start merging the tracks together that are output from the station. Since we've got two tracks on the main line and three output tracks, this will be a three to two track merger. And building a merge where any number of lines ends up as two outgoing lines is actually pretty easy. You just make every input line split into two and then feed one half of each of those into an outgoing line. Now we have to do some work on the backbone hub at the other side of the bridge. We have to upgrade it to take two incoming lines from this direction. Once again, our upgrades are complete. Now I talked previously that in a backbone hub, the merging line should have an adequate amount of choice to provide mixing into the outgoing lines, but I kind of ended up just doing a pretty lazy merge there. But it should be fine for now, at least until we revisit it later. Our upgrades still aren't finished though. We have to upgrade backbone hub 1 and the sideline hub we made in the first episode. It's not too much work, considering we're only adding one new lane in one direction. So every junction only receives one new split and one new merge. It'll take some restructuring, but the construction process is actually pretty simple. Sideline Hub 1 has been upgraded, and now I'm going to take a quick break to run the double track all the way to the factory and work on the splits and merges on the uh, main station hubs over there. And now we can see how the way we plan our junctions can lend itself to interesting network outcomes. All of our main station hubs take traffic off of the main line and input it back onto the main line in the same direction. And that kind of generates the need to double track only one side of the main line. Now of course that doesn't always have to be that way when you're planning a network or I mean even every time I do, I just thought it was an interesting way to design it in this case. It's just fun to experiment when planning out a network. You never want to do the same thing twice. Now the last thing that we have to upgrade is Backbone Hub 1. 
And like I said before, it's just one extra split and one extra merge, so the construction ends up being pretty easy. Now the jam is clearing up, but we can kind of see there's a new bottleneck on the sideline hub just north of this junction. And now I mentioned in a previous episode that upgrading this sideline hub was a nightmare. I think just the general way I laid it out ended up making it really hard to upgrade along with the terrain being kind of in an odd spot. Past a point, I probably should have just deleted it and made it maybe like a bit to the left where there's less mountain in the way. Anyways, enjoy about 30 minutes of my suffering time lapse into like a minute. And that was a huge pain. I ended up having to flatten a bunch of mountain and running a bunch of random tracks everywhere, but it works for now until I absolutely demolish it and remake it in a better spot. And now that we've got two lines running north, we have to add one more merge in this direction off of Backbone Hub 1. And now after running the traffic for a little bit, we can see the jam is fully dissipated. And we can return to that lazy merge I made earlier. You can see all the traffic coming from the factory is kind of being held up by trains coming from the north from the sawmill. And that's because I'm giving the sawmill track priority over the factory track. So here I just reverse the track that I'm giving priority to. Since there's a lot more goods trains from the factory than there are the sawmill, it's probably a better choice to have it this way. At least until there's a proper lane mixer built up. And now you can see the jam over the bridge is slowly clearing up after I flip the priorities. Then I notice the right hand turn is missing. If you can see, there's no track leading into that. But it never disrupted the traffic going that direction. And that's because all of our junctions, the main station hubs that are north of here, are all outputting traffic in the opposite direction and, you know, taking traffic from that direction too. So there are no trains going northbound from here. Now, there should have been something I caught earlier, but. I wasn't really thinking, there. there is no two-way junctions going 
in that whole section of the network. So what we basically have now is a one-way ring road on the north side of our network and a two-way on the south side. So I just went and tore that whole direction out of the north side. That should make it a lot easier to upgrade all those hubs later on. And now I feel it's a good time to make some more stations. I'm going to start with a station that services this power plant. So we can finally start tapping into all the coal mines around the map. And since we've branched off the main line again, I get to make another junction sign. Uh, it's another one-way main station hub, but it's going in the opposite direction, so hopefully it balances traffic through this portion of the network. And now we can make stations servicing coal mines. Here I'm making another drop station for the factory. I built it to drop steel into from a steel mill, but in retrospect, I'm not sure why I made it a separate station. I did make this station in the opposite direction of the previous one though, so maybe it'll balance traffic throughout the network a little better. Now we can start building the stations that will produce the steel. We're gonna have to build one station that takes iron ore, and another station where trains will go and pick up the produced steel. It's pretty much the same as the two stations we have servicing the factory and the sawmill. I ended up building these right next to the coal station, so we can kind of think of this as our heavy industries area. I have quite a few scenery mods, so maybe over time we can build this into a kind of like a realistic industrial facility type thing. And there I go, flooding the network with goods trains again. That was actually our 200th train. That's about all I can muster for this episode. This one went on a lot longer than the previous three. Now the episodes so far I've been making out of a backlog of footage I recorded all in one session. At the time I didn't have the foresight to get certain shots and more cinematic angles, but after editing four of these now, I think I have an eye for the kind of footage I need to make these a little more cinematic and engaging. So expect the upcoming episodes to have a bit higher production quality and look a little nicer. But anyway, that's the end for now. Bye bye.